Welcome to the Eater Man. Hello, welcome to the EEPROM 9. This, that we're pulling for a teardown now, is our old Netgear router. The first broadband router we ever had. Although we had internet before broadband, be it good old dial-up, I'm sure you'll remember the do-do-do-do-do, because I certainly do. This is when I actually got on the internet and started learning. Because although this was only about half a meg, which was a small improvement over dial-up, it was just enough for it to be fast enough to hold my attention. And thank God it did. Because this device allowed me to soak up knowledge from the internet. So let's crack it open and see exactly what makes it tick. I have opened up similar devices, mostly wireless adapters. I had a look inside the BT Home Hub. And it might be worth doing a little video that compares the two. Interestingly, the rubber feet don't pop out completely, which I've never seen before. They've got various kind of things holding onto them. So it uses your good old, what I like to call, bastard screws. But many others call them star screws. I prefer bastard screws for the pain they put me through before I own the proper tools to open them up. So now I can just, well, open it up and do exactly what Netgear doesn't want. But to be frankly honest, they don't really give a shit about their hardware once it's out of date. It's like, you know what, throw in a bin and buy a new one. And as always, when these things hit end of life, they're dropout glore super slow. <laughs> Seriously, this got down to points where it was, where it was actually going at bits per second once and it was painful it was actually dial up was faster oh that was painful really. and so the bottom removes I have not opened this up before and first thing we're created with is a circuit board with absolutely jack shit on the bottom it's a multi layer board which is quite obvious and there's the Netgear stuff and it's date production was 10th of the 1st, 2000. Huh. Huh. Oh no. That 10, well, it certainly wasn't 2000. It would have been probably, oh God. 2000, I don't know. That, that date code thing doesn't make much sense to me. I'm still learning what they are. So we want to get this circuit board out, which is currently not held in by anything. And it is, well, kind of expected as it is, but also a little more. So, let's go through what's inside this little bugger. So first off, we have the brains of the operation. I do still use this from time to time for work. For playing with them and learning. A Texas Instruments part, which is some sort of CPU, I doubt it's an FPGA, which is a TNET D7300GDU. And the other thing is some other part number below it. Here we have the flash memory. These types of chips normally flash, and if you look at that, 29L that's about right, that's flash, that'll be the RAM, so this is your like ROM, RAM. This will be some sort of custom chip that pretty much does the management of the modem and everything. There's smaller unrecognised chips here and here. And this one which is a 74HC. 748C, what's that? 48C14. So, if I remember correctly, that is a NOT gate chip essentially. And so, you have your modem input point. 
and it'd be quite interesting to get the ESR meter and put them on these capacitors which I do not recognise it TPO what? did they use to manufacture teapots or something? because they've missed the tea off teapot <laughs> or are they something to do with PO off Teletubbies I don't know if that broadcasted outside the UK but basically if it did and it's some kids show that's I think MX's Maxus is us. I'm not sure exactly. And so you have your reset button. Never really needed to press that. That's like filtration, protection circuits, capacitors. I think this is some sort of fuse or something. I've never been sure what these are. And this is like some sort of capacitor. Got a transformer and then that gets filtrated down. So the logic can essentially pick it up. And this is this is all the power supply section of all these capacitors and ferret rings, inductors. The other caps are made by. Uh, let's see if we can see any part number manufacturers on them. No. <laughs> Damn typical. Now this is your wireless card. Believe it or not, some of these you can actually pull out these devices and actually put them into computers and laptops and use them as wireless adapters for the laptop or PC. Oh crap, got my skin caught then. Um, I want to take out this copper thing so we'll just unstick that because we want to see what it's like underneath, and then we can stick it back afterwards because I'll reassemble this because this is actually quite useful. And what's underneath it? Both the card and this? Nothing! And the circuit board's made in Taiwan, which is a relief because the actual thing says made in China on it. Maybe they just assembled it. So yeah. But keep that in note, these older wireless adapters and routers are worth pulling apart because these can actually be used in laptops which have the slot which take these. We'll just pop that back in. It's kind of as expected, there's nothing really amazingly surprising in here. I was expecting sort of modem circuitry. I wasn't expecting such a detailed power supply, but it makes sense, and these would be power regulation chips and whatnot. But yeah, there isn't a whole load to these routers. Essentially what you have is a computer, then of course you have a custom chip which will do the LAN, wireless control, everything. Obviously, this is multi-layer board. You can't tell for jack shit where any of the traces are going. And you can also remove the aerial, and it's your usual sort of BNC type aerial. Might be worth actually salvaging, salvaging, salvaging these off dead routers and using them for stuff. Uh, I can. I can't remember what one of these. Oh yeah, it's on some thing that I've got in the garage that broke, wasn't it? Because I've got a few like old D-Link wireless adapters that I salvaged from the school. Uh, technicians let me never let me take stuff, but I'd just get it down further down the line. <laughs> yeah, so I was always quite a scoundrel when it came to. So yeah, that's inside a wireless router. Not a huge amount actually. There's more inside Cisco routers. I've got to see inside one or two of them. Quite interesting. But then they're a lot more complex than this. Because these do routing functions. And also switching. I have actually used this as a switch before. And it worked quite nicely. But the trouble was, because it's a router, the computer kind of defaulted to try and access the internet through it rather than just using it as a switch, it was actually using it as a router and of course unlike Cisco switches and that, these don't need 
configuration to use. They're pretty much plug and play. Just a few basic security things, and that's about it. So, I hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching. Oh man, this car's really getting me down.